welcome to the Jim Baker Show. I'm your co-host, Tammy Sue Baker. Today's special guest, Dr. Tom Horn. Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. Pastor Carl Gallops. Now, please give a warm welcome to my parents and the host of the Jim Baker Show, Jim and Lori Baker. Thank you, everybody. What a great audience. So yeah. good to have you here. And what, yes, a, what a show we have. This is one of the most epic shows I've ever done, and I haven't I done it yet. The, all the people in the church, those who are not into the Spirit of God, they don't understand this warfare that we're in. Do you think we're going to see an outward war, a more demonstrated war against Christianity Abs soon? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, the Word of God is clear about that. Pastor. See, I, this is why I work so hard to elect this president. Yes. Because God spoke to me that if we did not change the way we were going, we would be closing our doors on Christian television yes. and, and yes. churches would not be going out into any open revival or anything outside the church. Yes. And eventually they want to close down the you church. You and I sat right but here. Tell me what you yes. think. You and I sat right here together at this table on television, on the Jim Baker Show, pleading with Americans and particularly Christians, the church, to wake up, to get on board, to ask God to yeah. give us some breathing room because this is a deadly battle. It is spiritual. It is deep. It is dark. It is demonic. It, go it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. It started there when Satan said, I'm going to have all of this. Mm -hmm. And the nations that will come out of this woman, I will control these nations. And that's what's going on. That's the title of my book, Gods and Thrones. It's about the powers behind the thrones. But that shouldn't be something that is surprising to those of us that know the Word of God because Paul said, one of the clearest statements he made in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, he said, look, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's not against women and men that we see in political positions. Well, it is, but what he's saying is, is that the power behind the thrones, the gods, the fallen ones, the fallen Elohim, the, the, the demonic realm behind the thrones of the nations. This is deep. It is dark. It is demonic. It has been told since the beginning of time, only in the Word of God. It's coming to pass in our lifetime. We're the first generation in the history of the planet to live on the other side of the return of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that Satan hates that? Yeah. Right. Don't you know that? I mean, what was the whole Holocaust about? What yeah. was all that about? It was about eliminating that possibility. But it failed because the God of heaven, Yahweh, had his plan, his plan to reclaim the nation, to reclaim the, the fallen creation. And so, and so we are in the fight of our lifetime. And what I'm blown away by is that God trusts us mm -hmm. to yeah. be a part of this. We have been raised up for this time. Wow. This is our day. This is our generation. We are living between the return of Israel and the return of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that, of course, somewhere in there is this rise of the Antichrist kingdom. It won't last too long, but it will last for some years. Somewhere in that is a rapture, and I'm not, I don't get into all the rapture timing stuff, but, but so there are things that are going to happen, but that's where we live. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where we are. They're actually trying to silence the church right now. Yeah. Absolutely. And listen, you, we were talking talking a moment ago about the WikiLeaks and all the demonic stuff. Uh, Colonel McGinnis has been talking about that deeper state and the yeah, history yeah. behind it all. Don't forget, and I've got this chronicled in my book. I think it might be in these guys' books as well. But during the election, during this past election, we heard Hillary Clinton and John Podesta over and over, mainstream media saying, if you will elect me, Hillary said, I will open up the UFO right. files. Mm -hmm. And John Podesta said, I think America, I think they'll be able to handle what we know now. Uh -huh. I mean, they said that publicly. I've got all of that documented in this book. It is deep. It is dark. It is occultic. It is demonic. We are being set up in the spiritual realm for something amazingly yeah. dark to come upon this planet. Could we be Very in the soon. time of sorrows right now? We're... Well, it depends on how it's defined, but we are, I think we're at the edge of all of that. I really do. Listen. In, I mean, these in, are not the 50s happy days. No, no, they're not. No. 
And, and, and listen, and, and, and I'm a very positive guy. I'm a yeah, pastor, you know, you and I don't walk around some dark cloud over me. I'm always, I look at it like this. Man, I'm honored, to, I'm, I'm honored that God would use me, that would use us, that would raise us up in this time. I'm honored to be an ambassador for the kingdom in these days because, because that takes a special kind of troop, doesn't it, to be on that battlefront. And, and the Lord has looked at us and said, I trust you. I'm going to use you. Mm -hmm. But th think of this, Pastor Jim. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, he says, just like it was in the days of Noah, just like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Just like that. Now, when you explore what happened in the days of Noah, from the Garden of Eden to the, to the sons of God coming unto the daughters of men, and then finally all flesh being declared to corrupt, God pushed the reset button. Mm -hmm. He destroyed. It was so nasty. It was so vile. God pushed the reset button on the whole thing. Jesus said, it's going to be deep and dark and spiritual and occultic just like that. Just like Do you that. think we can comprehend what's coming? Well, that's one of the reasons I wrote this book. I'm trying to wake up the church. I'm trying to wake up the pulpits. I'm trying to wake up the pews so that they can comprehend. What about this flooding? Noah had a, a little water, a lot of water, I guess we'd say. But the, the flooding, earthquakes now, massive oh, every day now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, if, if we can't take a singular hurricane or a singular earthquake or a singular volcanic eruption and say that's God's judgment. Now, unless it's prophesied beforehand. I mean, if somebody comes forward that's, that's a prophetic voice and says, look, a few weeks from now, a few months from now, here's what's going to happen, and it happens, then take that to the bank, right? But in the meantime, the earth has, we are a fallen creation. The whole creation groans in anticipation of the coming of the Lord. So, so things, and, and the Bible says that in the last days, as it gets closer, these things would begin to multiply. They right. would begin to increase. The roaring of the seas, the Bible says. The earthquakes, the shaking of the earth. So, Here's the balance I give it. Earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, floods, fires, they've always been here. They will be right up to the last days. But the Word of God tells us that these sorrows, these things would begin to increase. And, and so, so I say, look, instead of running around and pointing to a singular event, unless it's prophesied before, and say that's the judgment of God, let's just understand all of it is the judgment of God mm. on a fallen creation. Mm -hmm. And we're living in the midst of it. And so... As the church, our main responsibility is to alleviate human suffering, yeah. to minister to people, and in the midst of it, to bring the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ, right? In yeah. the midst of it. That's I mean, because right. that's when you can get people's attention. That's right. Because here's the thing. So when a Hurricane Irma goes up the, the peninsula of Florida yeah. and devastates, when, a, when a, a Hurricane Harvey goes into Houston and devastates, when yeah. a Katrina goes into New Orleans and devastates, you know what happens? People ask What's God trying to tell me? And I like to sit down and say, I don't know. Let's talk about it. Okay, what about, yeah, yeah, what what about, what about Maria? You've got multiple. As I had a lot of time to study the word in prison. And as I studied the prison words from God, it, it showed me that it was the multiple things. It wasn't just one thing. Right. Earthquakes in divers places. That right. word means many places. Right. And so we are, the world is shaking. God's trying to warn us. The church is not wanting to listen. They want happy days again. Yes. But we're living in the beginning of sorrow. I believe the, this is time. And uh, I really want to get to the gods and thrones, the forgotten prophecy that's in there. And I don't know if... if forgotten prophecies. I outlined four, five, six, and I, I won't do all that now. But I outlined four, five, six prophetic uh, proclamations in the Scripture that we rarely hear any preaching, teaching from. We rarely talk about it as Christians, you know, in, in our churches and in our Sunday school classes. But, but they are central to what is happening in the world right now. Yeah. For example, I'll give a couple of examples. For example, in the Old Testament... Psalm 82, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, backed up in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24, Revelation chapter 20, um, and, and, and several other places. There are prophecies that God utters first and says that in the last days, 
that God will destroy, will kill, if you will, that they will experience death, that there is, a, there, there is a part of the angelic realm and Satan himself that will utterly be destroyed. They will die like mere men. Isaiah 14, God says, I will bring you down to the grave, to the pit. Like He says that to Satan. Ezekiel 28, he says, I will reduce you to ashes. You will be no more. A lot of people, I mean, God is prophesying. He says, I'm going to destroy you. Now you get to Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, and it says, Satan, woe unto you, earth, because Satan has gone down to you, and he is filled with rage. Why? He knows his time is short. Yeah. He knows his time is short. And then we hear Jesus speak about death and hell and the angels and Satan and all of that was created for them. And then we hear in Revelation talking about the great white throne and death and hell are brought up before the great white throne. Judgment is pronounced. To the lake of fire you go. And what does the scripture say? And this is the second death. It's done. Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. His demons are thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Death, complete separation from God. It's over. Ezekiel 28, you are done. You are reduced to ashes. Your time is over. I don't know about y'all, but I can't wait to the day when yeah. King Jesus is on the throne. So, so that's the thing. That's the thing. So as we talk about, as we talk about Pastor Jim, what's happening in the world before us in the deeper state and in and, and saboteurs and, and gods and thrones. It's all about exposing to the world and waking the church up. Here's what's really, really happening. God said it thousands of years ago. We're not making this stuff up. The headlines are declaring it. Yes. The, the government, the deep halls of the government are talking about it. WikiLeaks has been exposed. We know what they're thinking. We know what the demonic plans are. But God's Word has told us this. Thousands of years ago, we're now living in that generation. Here we are in the midst of it. These are very spiritual times, very demonic times, very dark times. However, the end of the story is Satan and his demonic horde and all of this evil, dark, despicable, nasty stuff that has been shoved upon humankind for thousands of years, it will go down to the pit, it will be reduced to ashes, it will be destroyed, and it will be no more, and Satan will finally be the god of nothing. Right. Nothing. <laughs> I love it. If, if I weren't a Christian, I sure want to be one. And, and thank you, uh, Colonel McGinnis, because I think you're dead on. Here's the thing, Pastor, that came to me as Colonel McGinnis was speaking, and I talk a lot about, all three of these books talk a lot about this. Here's the bottom line, Pastor Jim. For the Antichrist kingdom to fulfill itself, because the Word of God tells us there will be a generation that for a period of years will see this happen. I, I am not saying it's our generation or even the next generation. I'm saying there will be a generation. We're watching it all move that way. But for the Antichrist kingdom, this is, this is profound. This will answer a lot of questions people are asking. For it to come to fruition, America as we know it has to go away. It has to because we are the Wait a largest. True. Wait a minute. That's true. Say it again. I said. I mean, I want. For the, for the uh, this, word. This is very, if you, if, if you really believe this. Oh, I, I, That's I, shocking. With all my heart, I believe it That's because true. the Word of God makes this clear. The word America is not there, but listen to this. The principles, the prophecies of what I'm saying, they're right here. Mm -hmm. There will come a generation that will see the rise of the Antichrist. That will be a globalist, one world order, kind, whatever you want to call it. There will be a global marking system. There will be a global demand of worship of a person and the beast, the system that encompasses, that, that, that rises up that person. It will. The Word of God says it will happen. Jesus talked about it. Paul talked about it. Peter talked about it. John saw it at the Revelation throne. So in order for that to happen, who is America? We are the largest Christian nation on the planet since the time of Jesus Christ the world has ever seen. All of the evil amongst us, we're still the best thing going in a fallen world. We're right. the only nation that has to build walls to keep millions of people from flooding in. But the wall is the problem. 
Because as long as there is rule of law, a constitutional republic, the, the, the most powerful military on the face of the earth, the most powerful economy on the face of the earth, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if all of that is undergirded by a Judeo-Christian understanding, the Antichrist system cannot have the world. This has to go away. Wow. So this and is so, a spiritual so warfare. Is, that's, that's the point. It's a spirit, and it's a spirit that's, of Antichrist that's trying yes. to take over, and, that's and where, he's got a lot of converts. That's where the title of my book came from, The, the God. Gods, little g, you know, the gods. I'm not saying there's a pantheon of equal gods to Yahweh. I'm, talk, I'm yeah. using the term Elohim, the, the, the fallen realm, the demonic, the gods behind the thrones. Look at the thrones in America. Yeah. We keep asking, what's going on in California? What's going on in Chicago? What's going on in D.C.? What's happening in these governmental institutions? What's happening in the educational institutions? What's happening in Hollywood? What's happening in the media? The gods are behind the thrones, and they're working together to bring down what we know as America. It has to happen for the Antichrist to rise. Colonel, the Am rule right? of law. He just mentioned the rule of law. What part?